Hello crafty friends, I'm quite excited that I managed to get my hands on some one-sided index cards. They're blank on the one side with lines on the other side. Now if you can only get your hands on the ones that are lined on both sides, that's perfectly okay too. I've made many many projects with those and they work just fine. But I love these ones that are blank on the one side. So I got a couple of packs and got stuck straight into some projects. Now I only had a slight idea in my mind of what I wanted to do with these. So you'll see as I create the project it changes a bit and I try different elements and then change my mind and try something else. But what I tend to do is I tend to film everything I make and I share everything with you because I find that's a way that we can both learn together. So I will often show you my mistakes or if things don't work out how I change them to maybe work out better. So I've started with the two index cards. I'm putting some white tissue paper with some Mod Podge. On the one card I'm doing it on the line side and on the other card I'm doing it on the blank side. And once I've placed the tissue paper down, I use my fingers just to smush it a bit so it makes a few buckles and little lines. I don't want it smooth, I do want that texture. And then I also add another layer of Mod Podge on top of the tissue paper, which will waterproof this so we can add some color. I then dry everything well. Once it's all dry, I'm just going to trim the excess tissue paper using a scissors. You could also tear it at this point if you want more of a rustic look. To add colour, I'm going to use some of my Tim Holtz um, Oxide Sprays. This colour is called Tea Dye and I'm just putting a few drops from the bottle onto an acrylic block. And then I spray it with water and then I take my index card and I smush it onto the wet ink. You don't only have to use inks for this technique, you could also use watered down acrylics or even watercolors. The next color I'm using is Vintage Photo. This one I only have in an ink pad, so I just press the ink pad onto the acrylic block and spray with water and then it makes the ink into a liquid, so it's easy to use the same way. And you can already see on the cards where the tissue paper was creased, it's picking up darker areas of the color and making beautiful textures. This is the part that I love. I draw well between each color. The next color I'm going to be using is called Brushed Corduroy, also in the ink spray. And this one I'm just splashing directly onto the card and then spraying with water. And then I move the card around back and forth and up and down and just let the liquid run and make its own patterns and shapes. I'm putting the excess ink that's running off onto another card that I can use at a later time for another project. I'm not quite sure what my final product will look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add some color on the reverse side so we don't have any plain white sides just in case these sides will be visible when I finish my project. So I'm just adding a few splatters of ink and some water, just very lightly letting the color move around just to allow it not to be totally white. I would love if you subscribed to my channel. Also hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. For the next step, I'm going to add a few pieces from pages from an old book with a glue stick. I'm not sticking it over the entire index card, just in one or two spots. So I just put some glue stick just randomly and then a small piece of the paper over and press it down really, really well. You can do it upside down, sideways. It doesn't have to all be straight. And I'm also doing a little bit on the back. Now once the glue is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take this paper and peel it off. We'll peel off as much as we can. There where the glue adhered, it is going to stay behind and leave a lovely rough effect. It's going to be very torn on the edges and sort of peeled off. Hard to explain, but you can see what I mean. And I really, really love this look. And then to soften the overall look, I'm going to add some gesso. I'm just going to use my finger and just dab it on just here and there, blending it over some of the torn edges of where I put the book paper. This, I think, just softens it and helps everything blend and become sort of more connected. Now, 
Now at the beginning of the project, I knew I wanted to make a pocket on my index card. That's why I made two, because I was going to cut one in half and make it the pocket. But then I thought it all looks a little bit too similar and the pocket really wouldn't stand out. So I decided then to use some clear vellum for the pocket instead. Like I said, I change my mind and the concepts as I go along. But I share everything with you. So I don't want my vellum pocket to be too perfect, so I'm going to do a torn end and then what I do is I cut it a bit bigger than what I need and I'm going to then stitch around with my sewing machine to attach it to the index card and because it's overlapping it's much easier to sew, it won't slip and slide under my sewing machine and once it's sewn then I can trim off the excess. So I've gone all the way around my card and also down the middle so it's created sort of like two separate pockets. I can then trim the excess vellum. If you cut the vellum exactly to the size you need, it is a little tricky then to stitch under the sewing machine and you might get it to not fit correctly. Just as an added little touch, I'm going to round the corners with my corner rounder punch. I'm very happy with the vellum as it allows the bottom designs to shine through. If I'd added a solid piece on the top, you would have lost the effect of the bottom of the card. And now another fun part is to fill the pockets and this you can do with anything that you have in your craft room. Um, I'm going to make mine color coordinated, you don't have to. I've just found a few little things that can fit inside my pockets and I'm just adding those. A fun way to use lots of little bits and bobs that you have that you might not be able to use in another project. Now I want this to resemble the index cards that you actually get in those index files that have the proper tab on the top. So I want to create a tab for this and I want it to be the sort of the proper shape that you'd normally see. Usually when I make my index cards I'll just put a um, admit one ticket or a piece of ephemera or anything sort of as the tab part but this one I actually wanted to have the shape. So I'm going to find something that has a shape. I have an old manila index card that has that shape I want and I'm just going to use that to trace around on the paper that I'm going to use for my tab. If you're good you could also draw that freehand. Mine wasn't coming out evenly so I just did a little shortcut and used the ready-made tab as a template. This is a piece of uh, printed vellum that I'm using for mine and once I've cut it out I'm going to place it right in the middle of my card. To attach it to the card, I'm just going to run it under my sewing machine and then it'll sort of match the rest of the stitching that I have. The goodies that I'm placing inside my pockets are a white tag that's a ready-made tag, a mason jar tag that's made out of craft paper, two pink um, transparent flower stickers, some vintage tickets and then a little tag with the flowers, it's actually from your creative studio, from one of the subscription boxes. I have this cute little printed date, it's actually from a free printable from Pinterest, it's just left over from another project. I do like the little date it has on, so I'm just going to stick that with a glue stick on the bottom right hand corner of the index card. Another optional finishing touch is to distress the edges of the entire card. You don't have to do this part, especially if you don't have the ink, but I do have it and I'm just going to finish it off with a little bit of distress. Options to use this index card, I would pop it inside a junk journal, I would attach it to a page with a really large paper clip. You could also pop it inside a pocket inside a junk journal or even send it as happy mail. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're inspired to create your own pocketed index card. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Bye.